So I'm sure that you've heard about crypto or Bitcoin before, with Elon Musk tweeting about Dogecoin, Bitcoin becoming the new uh, official currency for El Salvador. Um, we constantly hear terms like DeFi, Metaverse, NFTs. But to understand what they all mean, we need to first boil it down to why it all matters. And it all comes down to one single term, one word, decentralization. To understand the meaning of decentralization, we need to look at centralization, our normal world. Centralized economies are defined as an economy and a system put in place in which a lot of the responsibilities and authorities are put under one point of control. What does that mean? Well, if you take a normal person living a middle class life and they want to save or spend or send or receive any amount of cash, you typically do that with a bank. And the question with, with the centralization problem is what happens if that bank lets you down or fails? And that's where decentralization comes in. Removing the need to trust or removing the need to have permission to participate in an economy. And that is why Bitcoin wasn't invented in the first place. Bitcoin is only a means to transact between one another, which means send money to one another and store it without a point of centralization. You do not need a passport. You do not need an ID or any sort of permission to participate. All you need is Wi-Fi and a device to actually send or receive or store very safely any amount of money that you want. Without delving into the nitty gritty details of how Bitcoin works, let us just accept that this is a system in which no single person or company has control over your money or whatever you do in it. And while today Bitcoin has now entered the mainstream and everyone's at least heard of it, let's take a look back at how it all started. Okay, so the first thing that we need to understand is that nobody on the planet, except for the person himself, knows who invented Bitcoin. We all know that someone called themselves Satoshi Nakamoto and came out with the rules and regulations of Bitcoin in what was termed the white paper all the way back in 2008. So while we don't actually know who Satoshi is, he was quite active in online forums telling people word of mouth about Bitcoin, this new system and new way to transact. And the first people who actually got caught onto it were tech savvy individuals who were present on those forums. Now, interestingly enough, Bitcoin actually did not trade at a monetary value. There was no price of Bitcoin back then. These people were just trading Bitcoin at whatever they thought it was worth at the time. And so a few years down the line, a popular trading card game launched their own website called Mount Gox. And this was for the popular game Magic the Gathering. And people were trading cards and playing online using Bitcoin. And the website was actually called Mount Gox, which was actually shut down a few years after that. This is where we get into the dark past of Bitcoin. A dark net website called the Silk Road was launched. And this was a website that was used to trade, buy and sell illegal services. And while the website was eventually shut down around 2013, Bitcoin was forever associated with crime money laundering and fraud. And even today, because of the Silk Road and how big it was, there's still a slight stigma when it comes to cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. Now, because of Mount Gox and the Silk Road, there was a lot of volume and a lot of attention coming into Bitcoin. And this is actually when Bitcoin broke $100 and $1,000 for the first time in its history in the same year. Now, news of Bitcoin hitting four digits did not fall on deaf ears. It garnered a lot of attention and Bitcoin was trading on different platforms between people who were familiar with it at the time. And this is where the attention for Bitcoin really started to grow. And because of all the news coming out during this time, Cointelegraph was actually founded in 2013. Now, from a legal perspective, there was still a bad taste left after all of the bad press around Bitcoin. But moving all the way forward to 2016, this is when Bitcoin really started to grow. Now, with all this new attention, from a legal perspective, governments were still hesitant on implementing Bitcoin in any serious way. However, this time, 
This is when Vitalik Buterin founded Ethereum and the story of CZ began. And when mainstream exchanges like Coinbase and then soon after Binance was founded, a lot of the mainstream and retail investors came and started investing in Bitcoin. Fast forward to 2017 led to the first time that Bitcoin broke $10,000. And soon after that, it broke $20,000 as well. And 2017 was forever termed the year of the ICO boom. And just as Vitalik and CZ's stories were getting started, the Bitcoin community was divided. There were two groups of people that wanted to change how Bitcoin worked. But eventually in 2017, they came to an agreement where they came out with a Bitcoin alternative called Bitcoin Cash. The story of Bitcoin Cash is actually quite fascinating. It was the biggest Bitcoin community civil war. If you want to know more about how Bitcoin Cash came to be and why it matters, be sure to follow us. Hit the subscribe button, give us a like and comment down below if you want to know more about it. So in 2017, there were a lot of people borrowing a lot of money to buy Bitcoin. Now, the problem when you borrow a lot of money to buy Bitcoin, you better hope that the price goes up because you have to pay that money back. Now, eventually, there was a bubble that burst and the price of Bitcoin crashed from $20,000 all the way down to a mere $3,000 in the same year. And after the ICO bubble, a lot of people left Bitcoin for a new thing and forgot about it. But Bitcoin was trading steadily between three and $9,000 for the longest time until the pandemic. Uh, when the pandemic hit and all people had was their time sitting at home during lockdown, Bitcoin eventually broke its previous all-time high price in December of 2020, which was $20,000. Now with the new hype and excitement and hope surrounding the space, guys like Elon Musk started to notice and he started tweeting about Tesla purchasing Bitcoin and making it a part of the company. This was the biggest example of a company getting directly involved with the crypto space. Soon after, months down the line, Bitcoin rallied up to $40,000, $50,000 and eventually its current all-time high price that it ever reached, $69,000. Now with all the hype and with all the excitement calming down, where we're left at is where we are today. Now, Bitcoin is just one cryptocurrency out of thousands of cryptocurrencies. A lot of companies are starting up, a lot of investors are coming in, and a lot of them are coming to the Middle East. And this is where we are today. The government and the leadership of the Middle East seem to be one of the most proactive in the world where governments allow and incentivize innovations in the space. And with a lot of the crypto attention being focused in one region, this is one of the reasons why Cointelegraph Mina came to be. So to keep up with what's happening in crypto and in the Middle East, make sure to visit ar.cointelegraph.com. And that's it for the history of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in a nutshell. To keep up with all our upcoming content, don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that bell icon so you can stay up to date.